All right, so today uh, got a 96 Bronco, I think, dropped off. Uh, minor issue with the steering and also can't get it to go into park. Uh, I know why it can't go into park. The, uh, these 90s Fords are notorious for this, uh, this bolt comes out, loosens up, super easy, tighten it up, we'll be back with that. But uh, also complaining that there's an issue with the steering wheel and that the column needs to be rebuilt. Um, said there was a lot of play. Well, I'd say that is a lot of play. So uh, we'll get this column torn apart and see what's wrong with it. See if we can't get it fixed. Also mentioned that the brakes lock up only on one side um, on the front. So just taking it on a quick test drive with uh, sketchiness. Oh yeah, she's sliding. All right, so that's uh, that's about as much of a test drive as I need with this because, uh, well, <laughs> I don't really like that. And I'm definitely not going on the road. So they just drove this thing away to get it to me. And well, I guess it's fine. They did mention sometimes when you're turning, the steering wheel will get caught on the column and you have to kind of like lift it up to turn it. So it's like, uh, it's perfect for a first car for a kid or something because they can't be texting and driving because uh, this is like a two, two hands needed type of deal. But we'll get her in the shop and get this column torn apart and see if we can't get it fixed. Oof, these brakes are soft. All right. Oh, we, all, we don't have park right now, so we're just gonna shut her off in reverse. We'll get that fixed pretty easy. The first thing we're gonna do on this Bronco is, uh, well, I went ahead and disconnected the battery and drained the uh, any residual power since I am taking the airbag out. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take the airbag out, get the steering wheel pulled, and then I can look and see what's damaged on the column itself, and then I'll know if I can get parts. Good airbag. All right, so before I go ahead and pull the steering wheel, I went and made a very small chisel mark right there and right there. That way I get it lined straight back up. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and mark it with a paint marker. All right, so I got the puller mounted on the steering wheel. I should be able to just tighten this guy up and it should pull right off. There she popped. So just a little bit of pressure and the wheel pops right off. And then fish these two wires through. Okay. I just talked to the customer. Um, I'm gonna try and get the parts coming. Can't get them locally, I'm gonna have to order them. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and get underneath there and tighten up the, uh, the two bolts. They're just like this, they go on the back of the column. And that's what the shift linkage is connected to. That's why it won't go in park. And then I'll pop the door panel off and I'd readjust this uh, door handle and put a new door handle on it for him so that he can uh, open his door without rolling the window down. And then we gotta pull the front end apart. Uh, things sliding a little bit and we need some brakes, maybe. I'm not sure what the problem is, but we'll at least get it popped apart and take a look at it. Now we are underneath the dash. I'm doing a little yoga out here. So it's fun. See if I can get my light set up. Okay, so the linkage of the shifter is right here. Let's see if I can get this camera turned around there. You can see. And so we've got a bolt that's supposed to be right here, and there's an additional bolt right here. I don't know if you're seeing that. I can't tell. Anyway, these two bolts loosen up and it's what causes your shifter not to engage park or uh, gets real loose and your gears aren't where they're supposed to be. So as you can see, really loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this bolt back in, tighten that bolt up and we should be good to go. Typically, you always want to put Loctite on these bolts when you put them in. The size on these bolts is T30. And sometimes you don't, I mean, you don't have to wait for it to fall out completely. If you notice that your shifter is starting to give you problems, you go ahead and climb under here and check these two bolts because 90% of the time 
on these OBS model Fords, and this is the problem. All right, that's uh, that's all it took. Just tighten those two bolts, and now our shifter should be functioning exactly how it should. So easy enough. Three minutes, boom, done. Steering wheel's back on. Shifter's fixed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get this door panel pulled off, and then we can adjust the linkage or the connector for the door cable. And then just gotta grab a new door handle for it, and it should be fixed as well. This one's bad. These door handles on the OBS style Fords are notorious for breaking off. So they came out with, they were plastic originally, they came out with these metal ones. So people are like naturally, oh, it's breaking, let me upgrade it to a metal one. Well, then instead of having your weak point as the handle, it becomes the mechanism that's the weak point or the cable gets stretched. But you can see right here, this should be straight and it's obviously bent like down this way so all I have to do is take and bend that tab back this way and then I'll bend the whole thing a little bit just to give a little bit more and then that way when you pull here it's just at the end you're not getting enough travel so you get to the end and that's when you snap your handle off because you're having to pull really hard to get it to open so all I have to do is straighten that out and we'll be back Jim Dandy so give me a second all right got this piece straightened back out it should work a lot better now uh, you can replace this whole mechanism this piece along with the piece that goes inside over here and the cable it's like 40 bucks to buy it but I just noticed they had some problems in the past and uh, maybe ripped this whole thing off or I, I'm not sure what what happened but they've welded it on so it's not gonna be as easy to change it if we need to in the future but hopefully this will hold for a little while anyway so now we just gotta fish this cable back and through on all right and now we should be a lot better off so now we just got to get a new handle and this door will be fixed just got back from napa picked up a door handle for this thing the only one they had was chrome it'll work uh, realistically probably gonna break again anyway so next time we'll see if they have a black one Fixed. The last task on this Bronco is to figure out why the front brakes are locking up. Seems like only one wheel is locking up and it just puts you into a death slide. So actually the customer uh, went into a death slide and slid into a, another pickup uh, just because that wheel locked up and there's nothing you can do about it. You just, you're along for the ride. So. Uh, hopefully we can figure out what's going on with the brakes and get that taken care of and then uh, That issue will be solved and this thing will be road safe again, so Let's get it jacked up pop the wheels off and see what's going on Well, these lug nuts are excessively tight and uh, they have these stupid caps on them and uh, this one just broke off and got stuck inside, so I gotta go beat it out and then I can continue taking the lug nuts off. I hate these stupid things. All right, so we got both the wheels off and uh, looking at the brakes, there's still plenty of meat on the pads. The uh, rotors look good. All right, so we're back on this thing. Trying to figure out why the brakes are locking up. It's like the uh, the front just the, the front brakes just lock right up and nothing nothing doing. So it's got this ABS module right here, and I'm not sure exactly how it works, but.
but I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is just start checking fuses and see if there's any bad fuses on it. All right, so I test drove it. Uh, definitely something crazy going on. Didn't get any codes on a PCM, but on these older Fords, they have this little block right here, anti-lock test. And if you ground out this corner wire here, it's the white with the blue trace. If you ground that out, turn the key on, your ABS light should flash on the dash, the number of, or whatever the numbers of the codes are. Uh, I did that and my ABS lights not coming on at all I'm fairly certain when you turn the vehicle on the lights supposed to come on so I'm thinking the bulb may be either bad or removed I'm gonna go ahead and pull the instrument cluster out of this thing and see if I can figure out what's going on why that bulbs not coming on and then hopefully that'll help us identify what's going on with the brake system all right so I was able to pull the cluster out far enough to pull the bulb and that ABS bulbs blown so I just switched it with one of the turn signal bulbs. Uh, just grabbed a different one because I don't want to run the town right now. And now we're going to turn the key on and see this ABS light should come on. And however number of blinks it is in a row, it'll go a certain number of blinks. It'll stop. It'll go another certain number of blinks. That's two digits of a number. And then it'll hold for a while and then it'll do it again. So let's see what we get. All right, so there's two codes for the ABS system on this, and it's 41 and 42. Now we can go jump on the computer, look up what codes 41 and 42 mean, and that should give us a pretty good inclination as to what's going on with this damn thing. I found a chart that shows all of the different fault codes for the ABS system on this and explains what it could be. So. Codes 41 and 42 relate to the correlating 41 is the left, 42 is the right wheel speed sensor uh, and the tone ring. So I went ahead and pulled the hub apart and <clears throat> this tone ring is just packed full of grease and uh, like brake dust and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned out. We'll get it put back together and see if that will solve the problem. I'm, I have a feeling that this was not writing properly. I got the tone ring all cleaned up now. It should read correctly. Went ahead and cleaned the sensor, cleaned the shaft, cleaned the hub itself. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. And we're going to test it and see if it works. Alright, I just put the brakes back together in the Bronco after cleaning the tone rings and the sensors. So I don't have an ABS light on, but I don't know for sure if that means anything. So we're going to test it and see if the ABS seems to do anything. No, because it didn't do anything before. Parts kit for the Bronco steering column just showed up, so I went ahead and pulled the steering wheel off, pulled the snap ring, and found that the spring is actually broken. So, not totally surprised because it was in real bad shape, but uh, we'll go ahead and get 
this collar and the, what's left of the bearing pulled out and get the new stuff inserted. Just finished installing the steering wheel back after putting in all the the new bearing and all the bushings and spring and everything. It's definitely not perfect. There's still some play, but it's a heck of a lot better. Here's where we're at with the Bronco. I have had both the front hubs off. I've had the driver's side hub off twice. So initially I took them off, cleaned the tone rings, cleaned the sensors, put it back, still didn't work. Okay, what's going on with these brakes? Driving me crazy. All right, so then I took the wheel back off on the driver's side and I looked and the tone ring to the sensor is supposed to have a gap of 0 0.070, 70 thousandths. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, that's like three eighths of an inch. The gap was at like three eighths of an inch. It needs to be 0 0.070. So three eighths of an inch is 0 0.3875. So way, way, way too much. So, all right, take that hub back off. Grab a puller, pulled the tone ring out, pressed it back down, used a height gauge to make sure that it was the same all the way around, put the hub back on, tightened everything up, spent tons of time checking the gap and making sure it was right. And it's pretty close to 0 .070. All right? Not perfect, but there's gotta be some margin of error there, especially because you can't get in there with anything to measure. So, I'm talking with my hands a lot. This is weird. Okay, hands in my pockets. So, put the hub back on, got, the, got it all measured, okay, I think it's at 0 .070, it's straight, not crooked. Go drive it, come back, check the ABS codes, still have the code for the left and right sensor. And I'm like, what in the world is going on now? Now, mind you, I've already done all the electrical tests, system tests, uh, checked the resistance of the sensor, the short to ground, short across, everything's fine. There's nothing wrong as far as I can tell. So I was doing some reading last night and I saw that it'll give you the fault, potentially, I, this is just a guess. This is what I saw online, but I'm hoping this will help. It can show the fault for the left and right sensor if the gap isn't the same on both sides. So now I'm gonna pull the Bronco in the shop Take the passenger side hub back off. Hey, kitty. This is our tone ring. They're not super difficult to get off. I saw one video online of a guy who said the only way to get this off is cut with a grinder and then hit it with an air hammer and he like was cutting it into pieces. So I don't know if he's never heard of a puller or, or what. You don't have to do that. It's not that hard. So you know, I'm just going to set it back on here. Got the door open today because it's nice. And so I've got my mascot cat, won't leave me alone, you know, typical. So when I started, this lip right here was flush with this um, seal face. So you can see I've moved it like, oh, let's see. So 
So I moved it over a quarter of an inch towards the sensor. And we should be very close to our 0 0.070 tolerance now. So we'll go put it on and see if it fits, see if it works. I got the front brakes back together. I think they might work now, not sure. Need to test drive it and find out. But before I went out into the muddy outer world, I decided to go ahead and pull the back brakes apart because yesterday I heard a little bit of squealing maybe and definitely some rattling. I didn't know if it was coming from the brakes or where it's coming from, but there was some rattling, some squealing. So pull this uh, drum off and down inside here we have the spring for the slack adjuster and the slack adjuster and the teeth on it are mangled it does go back together but it's pretty stiff and uh, I don't imagine it would do a lot of slack adjusting anymore and the end of that is smooshed but the coolest thing was up on top of the brake shoe is the lever for the slack adjuster that's pretty cool the fact that that thing landed right there and it's been riding you can tell she's been acting like a brake pad for a little while so that's pretty impressive really the cable it's got a little kink in it it was kind of up like that but it'll probably be fine but I definitely need a new spring, slack adjuster, and lever. So, I don't know how easy these parts are to come by, but I'll go check the old Napa.com. And if they've got them, I'll pick them up in the morning and throw this thing back together. So, I don't know what's up with the brakes on this thing, but they're just in bad shape all around. Finally, success is mine. Oh, sweet, sweet success. Just took this thing for a test drive, came back. I grounded out the pin on the test thing, turned the key on, one flash, and then six. 16 indicates system operating normal. Obviously, I did not slam the brakes and try and skid and test the ABS because I don't want to blow out that rear wheel cylinder. I just put the drum back on, just gingerly drove it. I think that that slack adjuster being missing explains my my soft pedal so tomorrow i'll get the parts get that rear fixed up and then i can skid this thing and see if the front wheels actually do what they what they're supposed to but the fact that i don't have my codes for my front wheel speed sensors super happy bronco's done shop just got cleaned up a little bit put the tools away swept up organized some stuff 76 Ford, next project on the list. But I gotta go get cleaned up because the wife and I are going to a black tie ball fundraiser tonight. So the kind of thing I really don't belong at, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So hopefully they don't kick me out. <laughs> uh, after the last video, I had several people reach out and they're like, man, you forgot the most important part of a YouTube video. So if you enjoyed the video, Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.